Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. Say this with me. God is great. great. His His word is true. And it works in my life. You sounded like you believe that today, so we'll, we'll, we'll take it at that. Amen, amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We honor you and we give you glory. We are in awe of you and what you're doing in the lives of the people of Journey Church. In our past services, we heard testimonies as people were baptized of how you've been at work in their lives and how you've changed them. And Lord, we don't take a moment of this for granted. We just say, man, wow. Wow, you still save, you still deliver, you still set free, you cause us to grow up and mature in our faith, and we are honored to be here this morning, and I just pray that you speak into people's lives today by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that same transforming power that, you know, raised you from the dead at Calvary's cross would be at work in our lives this morning, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So if you're visiting today, let me quickly bring you up to speed about what we've been talking about this past month. We've been talking about maturing as believers in Jesus Christ. Discipleship has been one of the primary focuses of the first month um, here at Journey Church. We, we've described in great detail in the past weeks what it's like when someone gives their life to the Lord. We call it being born again. You become an infant in the faith. And man, infants are so cute and so cool. We saw one on stage just a little while ago, and there she goes. Come on, go, Lila. You tell them you got lungs, girl. Go on, Jesus. Let them know what's up. So, you know, you you know, I stood out front during the, the ser- before the services, and so many people came in with new kids. It's amazing to see how the Journey Church family is growing in that way, too, you know. So they're all coming up to the front, and you look at them, and one week they look one week way, and then the next week they look uh, another way. Like, in fact, somebody different was holding the Serenos child last, or, uh, last night, and I'm like, whose kid is that? And they're like, oh, it's Mike and Rachel's. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, they just grew so rapidly, and and that's what early spiritual life is like for many people who surrender their life to Jesus. Those early days where you get saved, God just ignites your faith and everything is new and everything you're reading is amazing and you're blown away by what God is doing. And as you continue to mature, you become children in the faith. You grow beyond some of those infant-like things and you start to take on some new characteristics as you're maturing and growing. You start to be able to speak instead of just saying goo goo gaga, right? You can start to put together words, right? And and some of those words become sentences as you begin to share your faith and ask different questions about what Christianity is all about. And then as we continue to grow, we become these young adults in the faith. And one of the characteristics of young adults is good and some of them are bad. And one of the challenging parts of being a young adult is like many of us as teenagers, we think we know it all, right? So we get to this phase of our faith where, man, I know everything there is to know about Jesus and you're not going to tell me anything and hopefully that is a very short-lived phase because we all have growing up to do. We all have this continued opportunity to learn because if we start to harden our hearts at that phase, what happens is we can revert back at times to very childlike behaviors in our life. Or we enter into a season of rebellion where the things that we initially committed to in our faith, all of a sudden, um, we're not living them out anymore. We're we're drifting in our faith, we're stagnating in our faith, and we're not continuing to grow on to be fully devoted followers, or as we've been calling them, parents in the faith. You see, once you're a parent, your entire life changes. Many of you have experienced that here. Some of you are in the process of getting ready to experience that as you're pregnant right now. But let me tell you something, when a new baby is born, your life is gone as you knew it, right? I mean, if you've experienced this, you know that you are now at the whim of that child. When that child decides to scream, you are getting up out of church and you're walking out so you don't disturb others in Jesus' name, right? When that child starts to scream, you're getting up. When that child starts to cry because it's hungry, you better get that baba out and find that baba or you are in for a long night right when that child does the poopy in the pants right it's time to go change those diapers it's a stinky smelly situation but you willingly go in there because you love that child right you willingly take care of that so everything begins to revolve around something different because you're a parent your life is no longer your own right 
And in the same way as a parent in Christ, we realize that we are bought by the blood of Jesus. We are his now. He is to be our obsession. Our world is to revolve around him and his purposes and his desires. Our desires are no longer our own. We walk out in this newness of life. Our life is meant to advance the kingdom of God, to share our faith with others and build them up. We're no longer called to live for selfishness or self-centeredness or motivations that are our own of earthly orientation. We're called to live for this new kingdom of heaven. Those are signs of where someone might be in their faith. So we've been challenging the people who call this church home rather aggressively to move on to be parents, to look and walk and talk differently than they were before they got saved. So today we want to talk a little bit about what do those characteristics look like um, of what a believer does. But before we do, I have one final you know, announcement and then we'll kind of move on to today's message. So Many of you have come to realize that you don't understand or discern necessarily what the next steps are. You say, Eric, yeah, I, I've come to realize that I'm a child or I'm a young adult and I really want to be a parent, but I don't know the path to get there. I'm proud to say that close to 200 of you during the month of January filled out the Gospel Life Plan questionnaire and have or, have or are about to get issued your roadmap for spiritual growth for 2013. Would you give yourselves a huge round of applause? If you didn't do that, I would encourage you to go online to journeyuniversity.org and click on the part where it says Gospel Life Plan, and it'll tell you how you can get your own plan for spiritual growth for this year. Some of you have asked, Eric, I have not got mine yet. Yes, that is absolutely correct. You were so wonderful to fill out 200 of them that we are behind. So we are doing our best to filter through those, and we hope that in the next two weeks or so we'll have all of them done. We're lovingly praying over those. We're reading them intently so that we might give you the best suggestions possible so that you can move forward. And finally, last week, we talked about partnership, that growing in our faith is a two-way street, that each of us have a job and a role to do as believers. You have a job to do the work of the ministry. I have a job to equip people to do the work of the ministry. And many of you have already turned in partnership or membership forms. I want to encourage you, use those papers that are on your chairs next to you to sign up to either initiate a partnership or a membership at Journey Church or renew your membership for 2013. We don't assume that everybody's just going to renew. We want to give you that opportunity. So would you do that today or would you go online and do it as well using the link provided as early as possible because we would like to do a graduation with many of our new partners next week we'd like to invite you on stage and just pray over you and release you to do the work of the ministry so that's it on partnership please go ahead and jump in on those so today is a day of celebration Throughout the course of this weekend, we've celebrated with many who have been baptized and many more who will do so in just a few moments. So I want to spend the most portion of our time today talking about this beautiful moment in a believer's life and what it's all about. This discussion begins and ends at the foot of the cross. Water baptism, what is it and how do we respond? Baptism is a public profession of your faith in Jesus Christ. It's going public with your faith, and it's the next step of one's spiritual journey in obedience after they're saved. So there's a number of you who have already chosen to be baptized today. Many of you are wearing blue shirts. Would you do me a favor? Would you stand up right where you're at if you're getting baptized today? Give them a huge round of applause. we got folks all over the room. We're excited for you guys. You get to stand for the remainder of the service. No, I'm teasing. Feel, feel free to have a seat. We're excited for you. We're here to share this life moment with you. We want to assure that, we, that you know what it's all about. So you're going public with your faith in front of your family in many cases, in front of your friends, in front of your church family, and in front of the powers and principalities and heavenly places that are watching. You're stepping out in faith and saying, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and that is to be commended. So what does the word water baptism mean or what does baptism mean? Literally, it means to be immersed in water or um, basically to be dipped under water or to be immersed. And the, uh, the visual given here would be this of the following would be, um, say you have a white t-shirt, right? You have this white t-shirt, brand new, out of the box, beautiful, crisp, clean white t-shirt. And then you have a vat of dye or dyes. Maybe you're going to turn this t-shirt 
t-shirt into a blue shirt, right? So you have a blue set of dye and you go and you take this white t-shirt and you put it in the blue dye for a short period of time. Then you bring it out of the dye. The shirt is no longer white. The shirt comes out blue, right? So now you have a blue shirt that's there. There's no going back to white after you put it in the, in the, the dye, right? It's just not going to go. You could try to bleach the shirt. You could do all kinds of crazy things to it, but it is never going to be that pristine shirt that it started out with. It is now altogether different. It's entirely new. It is a blue shirt from that day forward. In similar respect, in a spiritual sense, you're going to see as you go into the waters of baptism and come out symbolically in newness of life, you are altogether a new creation. I'll give you one more analogy. Um, I'm not necessarily fully proud of the first job that I have, but I will share that with you. If you've been here for some time, you might remember what that job was. My first job was uh, when I was 13 years old, I was a pickle packer. My job was to physically pack by hand pickles into small jars or into five gallon buckets or even into 55 gallon drums at times. I packed pickles for a living. My dad was affectionately known as pickle. Danny. We were the pickle kings of Miami. We were the kosher pickle kings of Miami, so to speak, right? So this is my first job. And if you know anything about the pickling process, it's actually a fairly interesting one. Um, thing, uh, you get cucumbers that come from the farm. So you would get a, a train would pull up to the back of our building or large trucks would come with big wooden bins and these bins would be filled with cucumbers that are fresh from the farm. Now, any of you have looked at a, a cucumber and you've looked at a pickle, they look very similar, right? In fact, um, all pickles start their lives as cucumbers. So you would go in and you would put these cucumbers into what I thought was really cool as a 13 year old. They had this big machine that was there that it was like a conveyor belt and it was like a car wash for pickles, right? All the pickles would go on there and they would go up this machine and they would get brushed and they would get washed and then they would come out the other end into another bin and they would be clean pickles. And then we had already previously prepared to receive these cucumbers in their current state and we put together this brine. And the brine would consist of vinegar and water and pickling spice and other things of that nature, which would ultimately be um, poured into these bins that were probably about twice the size of that water baptismal that you see there. So you'd have all the pickles in there. We'd pour all of this brine with pickling spice into it. And then if you took the cucumber out immediately and ate it, it would not yet be a pickle, right? You had to put it up for a season. So we would put it into a refrigerated area for about 30 to 60 days. And then you would be able to take that cucumber out and the cucumber is now a pickle, never to go back to cucumber state again, right? Because the vinegar and the water and the spices had all gotten into it that it permeated every pore of that pickle. Now let me tell you about one bad side effect of working in a pickle department. See what happens is that same pickling spice that you're around all the time, it kind of gets into your skin and it gets into your body. And no matter what you do, you come out smelling like a pickle. So as a 13 year old, I was the butt of many jokes, right? So I would be walking around smelling like a pickle. In fact, it'd take like two weeks, you'd be back in school and people would still be saying, what is that smell? You know, like it, it would take a little while to get off your body. You couldn't just brush it off because it would become permeated inside of you just as it did in that cucumber and it comes out all together new. Now,